So today is a special day. Do you know what the day is? It is Pentecost Sunday. So what does that mean? Uh, I must confess, I had to do some research myself to get a better understanding of the significance of this day. So let's read from the Bible. It says that when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So this is from Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. So the Pentecost is celebrated 50 days after Easter and is considered uh, for some as the birthday of the Christian church. Because it was only after the Pentecost that the, the, the Christian, the early disciples felt uh, fully convicted in who Jesus was and felt the confidence and fearlessness that was required to spread the gospel. And because of the Pentecost, Christianity really became a global religion. In one sense, if the Pentecost didn't happen, then Christianity may not exist or may not exist as uh, well as it, it's known um, in this day. So it's a very important uh, holiday. So just last night, I returned from the ACLC, uh, which is the American Clergy Leadership Conference 21st Anniversary Summit at IPEC. IPEC is our International Peace Education Center in Las Vegas, the beautiful place. Uh, I'll share a photo or two so you can see that. It was a three-day conference with around 150 participants, of which 50% uh, were traditional Christians and 50% were unificationist Christians. So the timing of this conference uh, is very numerically significant. I'm a numbers guy, so I, I, I really appreciate when things line up this beautifully. But this was the 21st ACLC anniversary. Uh, it was held in the 21st century of the 21st year, 2021. And interestingly, at the beginning of the 21st week, I double checked and it's really cool. Uh, that Thursday happened to be also the 21st week of the year this year. So when we were preparing for the summit and Dr. Yong, uh, our regional president, heard about it, he felt immediately that the significance of this event was that it represented 21 years of the American clergy leadership and family federation uh, coming together in unity, similar to the course of Esau and Jacob after 21 years. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with that story, uh, but um, long story short, there was a, a conflict between Esau and Jacob where Esau really wanted to kill Jacob, but he, he escaped and he went through a 21 year uh, arduous course. And then they came back in unity as brothers and uh, had a God experience where they were able to embrace and let go of all the the enmity that they held uh, for so long. Here's a photo of all of us gathered at IPEC, uh, the International Peace Education Center. Again, as I said, it's a beautiful place. It was the final um, kind of building that the late Father Moon had initiated. Uh, and he had this vision of really establishing an education center in Las Vegas specifically uh, because Las Vegas is known as Sin City, he wanted to really use this as a space to really revitalize the city and bring God into the worst place, in one sense, into the hell of hells and turn it around with God's truth and love. So that was kind of the vision behind it. And it was really um, historic in a sense that the ACLC can host its 21st anniversary summit here in IPEC. 
And for many, it was the first large gathering since the COVID pandemic started over a year ago. So before I went to this conference, I was planning on talking about the Pentecost this Sunday. So I was really hoping, I was praying to God, God, help me out, help me experience a little bit of what Pentecost is, um, provide me with this experience so that it would help me share on this topic on Sunday. So I did go with certain intentions and hope uh, that I'll have some, some kind of special experience. And provide he did, I mean God, um, particularly through a testimony by Archbishop George Augustus Stallings. I mean, for those that know George, he is a powerful speaker in general. But this time, there was something that he said that was really, it wasn't even what he said, I think. Well, I guess part of it is what he said. But it was the spirit with which he said it that made it very transformative. Uh, he basically testified to Father and Mother Moon as the Messiah, the returning Christ, and as true parents to our collective group of traditional and unificationist Christians. Now, I've heard him testify before, but something was definitely different this time. Uh, yeah, as he was sharing, there was this space of this feeling of repentance and confession and Something with that kind of heart was, was there and present. And I remember uh, myself, like, as soon as he finished speaking, I mean, tears started flowing uh, to those that were nearby, and it kind of filled the room. Uh, even myself, I, I don't really tear up so much myself, but I, I experienced, like, tears flowing down my cheeks. And I'm like, half of me is, like, wondering what's going on here. What is this? feeling. Um, and yeah, I had to take some time even afterwards to just process and digest what I had just experienced. And when I was reflecting, certain thoughts came. One was that I felt the presence of Jesus in the room. Um, and Jesus was kind of like peacefully smiling down. I also felt Father, Father Moon's spirit you know, this, uh, he was like smiling from ear to ear. Um, and then I felt this kind of spirit of God. And for God, the, the energy was a little bit different. God was like, finally, or like this feeling of like, this release of this, this burden or weight that he's been carrying this whole time, something was lifted. Uh, and the whole room, uh, was filled with tears. Yeah, I, I felt like this was the experience I was looking for, um, this, this Holy Spirit experience that the early disciples of Jesus experienced at the time of Pentecost. Uh, and the timing was, again, really perfect. We just finished this conference. It was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Um, and also we know that Mother Moon is coming to America in just a couple of weeks. Um, so all of this, I feel, has significant historic uh, meaning behind uh, what happened there. And I remember this one, one feeling that I was left with um, after that experience, and that was, you know, how long is it going to take for us to let go of our fear? You know, how was it like for Jesus' disciples? You know, they, after Jesus passed, you know, they were in despair. They didn't know what had happened. They didn't know what they were going to do. Um, but when the Holy Spirit came down, they were reminded of who Jesus was. And without fear, they could now share with conviction to everyone who had ears to hear. So I really felt we're in a parallel time period. And I felt like we need to experience this Pentecost where we are no longer afraid or ashamed of sharing who true parents are, 
uh, who you know father and mother moon are and also reconcile between christianity traditional christianity and unificationist christianity we are actually on the same team actually if you if you can really pray and hear how jesus feels about this he's elated that we can come together and work together i mean think of what what god must be feeling does god care about what denomination you are or what particular theological perspective you have no, God simply wants to create a family, a world family where God can dwell, where his love, his true love can be experienced in every family. That's what he wants. If religion is going to help us get there, great. If a particular denomination is going to help there, great. The point is, if we can work together as fellow uh, siblings in Christ, uh, with that spirit of Christ, then we can expedite this process of establishing the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So I'm still uh, digesting what I experienced. Uh, it's going to take some time to fully understand it. But the essence of what I felt with the time has come. The time is now. There's no more need to wait or be afraid. Uh, we can fully testify and work together with our, our, our Christian brothers and sisters, and it's going to be amazing. So one other significant thing that happened at this summit, I felt, this is my personal opinion, but I felt there was this unity of ACLC and WCLC. Now, WCLC is the World Christian Leadership Conference. It was an, uh, established a year and a half ago, uh, 2019, December, uh, right before the Prudential Center event. And uh, this was really establishing on the foundation of ACLC, a global level uh, Christian network. Here we can see that Dr. Yong offered Dr. Kim a plaque honoring him for his 21 years of investment in ACLC. Actually, ACLC was the most prominent in Chicago and it really grew from there. It was one of the few uh, organizations that were initiated that Father and uh, Mother Moon attended directly multiple times. I think it was five times. And uh, there were many others also that co-founded co um, ACLC at that time. But um, at that time, Bishop Kim uh, was really a lead player in making that happen. So I felt this represented uh, also the bat, uh, baton passing of the co-chairmanship from Dr. Kim, Kyun Kim, to Dr. Yong. Uh, you can see they're both smiling. Uh, and it was also an internal unity between ACLC and WCLC, which is very significant. I know from studying father and mother's words that whenever there's a greater unity that needs to happen, in this case, you know, traditional and unificationist Christianity, there needs to be an internal condition of unity set first uh, as a condition in order for the greater unity to happen. And I felt like this unity of these two brothers, <laughs> Dr. Young and Dr. Kim, again, this is a personal opinion, but I felt like this was the significant condition uh, that was also necessary for victory to happen. And then later that night, there was a, another very special experience. We had a surprise performance from Dietrich Haddon uh, during our anniversary banquet. And he sang three wonderful songs, um, gospel music. I don't know if you're into gospel. I'm personally not so much into it, but you know, I was in the spirit. So we, I participated and his final song was Well Done. Well done. You can look it up and listen to it. I noticed that his performance happened to be on the 21st hour, which was 12, 8, 9, 9 p.m. of that day, and the 21st minute of that hour. So it was 9.21 p.m. was when he was singing this song, uh, Well Done. I could probably throw in the 21 seconds as well, but I felt God was speaking to all of us saying, well done. Uh, 
And it was just a celebratory moment of 21 years and this coming together of ACLC and Family Federation and passing on from the past 21 years to the next 21 years. So right after uh, Pastor Haddon's performances, uh, Dr. Yong was invited onto the stage to deliver his keynote address. And he really outlined the vision for the next 21 year course for ACLC. And, you know, it was a long day. We were up since 3 a.m., probably Dr. Young earlier than that. And at that point, it was already like close to 10 p.m. So it was a long day for everyone, but he really brought the spirit. Uh, I felt the Holy Spirit was upon him. He was shaking and shouting and really uh, conveying that the time is now, that this is a different age. You know, there was a lot of challenges that we faced in the past, and I'm sure there'll be other growing pains going forward, but this was a different age in unity um, with both traditional and unification Christians coming together and also on a deeper foundation that this next 21 years was going to be years of growth. He spoke with fire and conviction, and uh, yeah, he was able to really rouse up the audience uh, to really declare this new era. And finally, another significant thing that happened during this conference was this unity ceremony that was led by Dr. Luan Rouse. Uh, he kind of coined this term of traditional Christians and unificationist Christians, and I'm kind of learning to adopt that language. So he had uh, first the unification Christians and the ACLC representatives come up from each of the five subregions to line up in front. And then he had representative uh, traditional Christians to come up uh, and line up facing us at the same time. Uh, actually, interesting fact, um, we were talking about this, you know, this need, this intention, but it wasn't until that morning that we had decided to do this particular ceremony. And I feel like Dr. Rouse is really gifted with this ability to, um, to do these ceremonies or like go with the spirit and create this, this uh, historic or momentous experience through, through ceremony. And while we were, uh, uh, he asked us to kind of join in hands together. I don't know if you can see me. I'm like the second in line here, um, representing subregion one. Uh, at the very front on the left side is uh, Archbishop Sulanch Lewis, who is the subregion one ACLC co-chair. And he read several passages, uh, Dr. Ross did. Uh, the first was from Genesis chapter 33, verse 10. If I have found favor in your eyes, Accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God now that you have received me favorably. For those who don't know, this is uh, the, the message that Jacob said to Esau when they embraced. And if you know the story, Esau was prepared to kill Jacob. He lined up his whole army and he was ready to just strike Jacob down. But Jacob came and he brought all of his uh, wealth and things that he earned over the past 20 years of labor under Uncle Laban. And he sent them ahead of him and offered and said, everything that I have, I offer to you. And then he, Jacob went and before he, he met Esau, he bowed seven times and really humbly came to Esau and said, when I see you, your face, I see the face of God. And that allowed that enmity of 21 years to dissolve and for these brothers to embrace. And that was uh, the passage that Dr. Luan Rouse uh, read to us while we were holding hands. And then he read one other passage uh, from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, 23. Actually, he said this every pastor summit and i didn't realize this was a verse uh, but he says but the fruit of the spirit 
is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such things, there is no law. Yeah, whenever Dr. Rouse reads this, I, I can feel this, this presence of the power of truth and love combined in this one statement. Because what, what this passage from the Bible says is that if you apply these truths, these values, there is no law. There is no theology that, that brings conflict. That if we practice these values, God has to be there. And so it was really encouraging us that beyond our perceived differences in theology or perspectives, that as long as we have these values, then God is there and that we can work together and that we can really build the kingdom together. So I really appreciated Dr. Ross for leading us in, in this ceremony. Around uh, Actually, it was close to, if you do exact numbers, uh, we need to double check, but I think it was around 144 people in the room. Again, 50% unificationist Christians, 50% traditional Christians. And uh, he had all of us, all the rest of the people in the room also stand. And uh, while we held hands, Dr. Rouse and Dr. Young were on stage and they prayed over us. Um, and one more thing I want to mention is that this wasn't just any group of, you know, people who wanted to come to this conference. There was a requirement. In order to come to this conference, they had to have uh, completed or started or at least committed to starting the 43-day process of marital renewal and experience the fullness of the salvific process of the holy marriage blessing. So all the people in this room weren't just people who knew us or know, known of us or just took the holy wine. These were traditional Christians who had completed or gone through the 43 days. So the, the, the level of understanding and ex common experience was much deeper. And I thought that was really important to lead to this kind of experience. We embraced afterwards and I felt this was uh, really a historic moment of unity. What Bishop Stallings expressed the day before was substantiated in my eyes with, with this embrace. And this also represented that 21-year course of enmity between Jacob and Esau coming together in an embrace and in solidarity. Uh, I remember one, uh, one person came up to me right after the ceremony, and she, and she was, I think this was uh, Mrs. Jackson. She was like, just in awe, like this is so historic. Like she, in all her years of ministry and working with ACLC, she's never experienced something like this. And I felt like this was a substantiation of a new era of working together. So, uh, um, you know, having gone to this, uh, through this experience at the summit, I couldn't help but notice that there were some parallels. And this was also mentioned by Archbishop Stallings. You know, Jesus was not accepted by the chosen people, the traditional Jews during his lifetime. In fact, the only people that accepted Jesus at the, at the time that he was alive was uh, the, the lepers, the, the prostitute, the, the people that were outcast from society. The, the, you know, there was a thief on the, on the, I believe it was the right side. Um, but point is only a handful or a few people and his closest disciples really understood who Jesus was during his lifetime. Of course, afterwards with the Pentecost, you know, uh, people were able to experience the Holy Spirit and they, they came to understand Jesus for who he was. But during his lifetime, it was only a few people. 
Similarly, Father Moon wasn't fully accepted by the chosen people of his time, the traditional Christians, while he was alive. Not fully. And I feel like this is our third chance with Mother Moon. The question is, will the chosen people of this age accept Mother Moon in her role as the only begotten daughter during her lifetime? No, I'm glad that we have history uh, to help us uh, learn from the past, but it's still up to us to apply that lesson in the current age to create a different result. If we can come in unity in, in Christ and attend Mother Moon in her role, we can fulfill our role as the chosen people in this age. But that is up to us. So what is our commission? What is our assignment? Let's read. Uh, this is actually from uh, Mother's message, Mother Moon's message. Christians are still waiting for the returning Lord, the Messiah. We must let people know that the Messiah has arrived. For the sake of the salvation of humankind, we must let the world know the legacy that true parents achieved during their lives. To realize world peace and one family centered on God while living in the same age as true parents. You need to do your best and fulfill your responsibilities as tribal messiahs. So this message was given by Mother Moon in 2013. This is the year after Father Moon had passed away. In one sense, I feel like Mother Moon was giving Christianity another chance. Or rather, let me restate this. By the grace of God, and as desired by God and Jesus Christ, Mother Moon was giving Christianity another chance to connect and fulfill their historic role. And when I say Christian, it also includes us as unificationist Christians. So our commission is to let people, especially traditional Christians, know who Father and Mother Moon are as the returning Christ and the substantial Holy Spirit. We need to share about their salvific work through the marriage blessing, the marriage blessing and expand it. And we need to know who we are as the chosen people, as tribal messiahs, and establish this peaceful, unified world as God intended from the very beginning. So today's secret uh, in experiencing the Holy Spirit Basically, I was, I was playing with different thoughts around this, but the secret to experiencing the Holy Spirit, the thing is, Mother Moon is the substantial Holy Spirit. So the secret to experiencing the Holy Spirit is list, <laughs> literally and simply to listen and attend Mother Moon. Okay. So I'm going to repeat that. The secret to experiencing the Holy Spirit is to listen and attend Mother Moon. And you may, <laughs> you might feel difficult about that, but you know, when Jesus, at Jesus's time, Jesus represented, you know, the second Adam and the Holy Spirit represented the spiritual Eve and together they were able to give rebirth to humanity, right? Now God's dream from the very beginning was the same, Adam and Eve, we're supposed to mature in love, create a family, and the world would be full of God-centered families. That didn't happen. They made a mistake. So God sends Jesus 2,000 years later to, to fulfill that original dream of having him come sinless, become the second advent, Adam, and then uh, find his bride uh, and establish his kingdom, create his lineage and establish his kingdom on earth. Um, Unfortunately, the chosen people didn't receive him, so he was crucified. Uh, and still, he, Jesus was able to gain victory through his absolute love and obedience to God and people. And that, together with the Holy Spirit, was able to give spiritual rebirth. 
But then Jesus said he was going to come again. Why did he have to come again? He came because he wanted to fulfill God's original plan for Adam and Eve. So the second advent was really about Jesus coming again. He anointed and he came in the form of Father Moon, who was able to find his bride, Mother Moon. And together, right, Jesus and Holy Spirit, Father and Mother Moon, give rebirth, not, not on the spiritual level and in the individual, but to expand that to the family level through the marriage blessing. We are all on the same team. This was God's plan from the very beginning. He simply wanted Adam and Eve to create God-centered families. He wanted Jesus to provide that for, for humanity as well. And he was able to do spiritually. And now Father Mother Moon came, again, anointed by Jesus, commissioned by Jesus to fulfill that original plan, but this time substantially in the family through the marriage blessing. That's exactly what Mother is asking, Mother Moon is asking us to do, is to let people know about who your parents are and share the marriage blessing to establish a peaceful kingdom. So that's our commission, everyone. So this is our time of Pentecost. There's no better time than now to work with our brothers and sisters in Christ and to work with Mother Moon while she is still on earth. We are in the same position as the disciples at the time of Pentecost. So let's take full advantage of this opportunity and fulfill our role in history. So also let's take every opportunity to int introduce Mother Moon and her story through sharing her memoir. So please remember to register yourself and invite your family and friends to join us in the Peace and Blessing Festival coming up on June 5th. And let's really inspire the world about the marriage blessing and the blessing culture. This is really our task. It's not just an event. This is a tool. But the whole point is to share, testify about Jesus, about your parents and their work, their salvific work of the marriage blessing. <music>